Hello, this is Alec from Authenticate. I'm a member of the Special Services team, and for today's training, we're going to be covering Shodan. To begin, we'll start off with Shodan 101. What Shodan is, is a search engine for the IoT, or Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is a vast network of internet connected devices. Now, similar to other search engines you may be familiar with, Shodan functions to where the user can search for content based on keywords. The task of scanning, indexing the ports and services of all these internet connected devices at the scope and scale was virtually impossible to do before Shodan was invented. With the use of Shodan, this capability is now accessible to any analyst. They'll simply go to Shodan's URL and they can begin querying and searching the index devices. How Shodan is collecting all this information and indexing these devices is through what's called crawlers. How Shodan sets up a crawler, um, the crawler is going to generate a random IP address. Once it does that, it'll generate a random port to test and then it will check that random IP and port. This process is going to be repeated. These crawlers operate out of servers that Shodan maintains across the globe, and the internet connected devices that it crawls and scans will return different banners depending on what services are running on it. All of this information, the banner, the IP port information, it's indexed and searchable. When you search in Shodan, by default, the query is only going to look at main banner text. It's not going to search in the metadata. For example, let's say you entered a search and you entered the term webcam. The only results that are going to be returned are going to contain webcam in their main banner. The data that's collected by Shodan and its crawlers is going to consist of information around the IP and port of a given device and is consolidated into what's called a banner. These two images are some examples of banner information. Again, that banner information is going to be textual and it's going to describe the service with a given device. Shodan is also going to grab metadata about a specific device. This will include geographic location, host name, operating system, and more. So now we're going to flip over to Toolbox and we're going to visit Shodan Live. To access Shodan, the user will need to enter the URL shodan.io. Now that we're on Shodan, we're going to enter a search. The user will come up to the search bar here, and for our first query, we're just going to enter webcam. Once the results begin to return, we can dive into this data. So to talk a little bit through the search results that we now have in our Shodan instance, once our query is entered and results populate back for us, on the left side of the screen, there are different filter options and there's a map of the world where you can view a little bit of the concentration data on where your devices are located. On the right, it's going to have each individual device with the banner information. So to talk through some of the specific device information, after you select a device from the search results, you're going to be brought to a page with more detailed information on that device or service. Again, this data might include geolocation, organization, ports, services, software, and more. So we're going to flip back to Toolbox and we'll go through looking at results. And now that we're in Shodan, I'm just going to click on this first device that we have in our results for webcam.
And as the page renders, it will give us a map and it'll populate where this device is located according to its geolocation data. But some of the things to be on the lookout for here, we have our city, country, organization, ISP. You can see update information, host names, and ASN. We will have port information as well, and we'll have the services here. So now that we've run a basic text-only search, we're going to look at some advanced search types. Shodan is going to allow you to be able to do advanced searches using filters. Filters are utilized in a simple format with this filter and a colon and then your search value with no spaces between them. We have some example formats there in the middle of the screen. You can see we have the filter name on the left side of the colon and then your value on the right. Then the example of a filter, we have city colon Moscow. If you want to search for a filter that has a value that's more than one word, you're going to have to wrap it in double quotations like the example at the bottom. So we'll flip back over to Shodan and we're going to run an advanced search using this filter. So now that we've gone back to Shodan and we've entered our filter search for city colon Moscow, we're now only viewing results that are populated in Moscow. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on this first option. And we can see in this banner information, cities Moscow, countries Russia, the organization and ISP are Beeline. We can go ahead and take a look at any port data or any of the services data that we want. The next searching method we're going to cover is geo-searching. Some of Shodan's most useful geographic filters are below. As you can see, there's a few different options to employ if you want to do a geo-coordinate search. You can do simply searching by country in the two-letter country code. You can use city names. You can use geographic coordinates in a bounding box, as well as region. For example, on the bottom of the screen, if you did a search for city Interlick, you would find webcams near Interlick Air Base. So now that we're back in Shodan, we're going to do that city search. So we're going to come up to our search bar. We'll type in city, colon, and Beijing. So now, according to our geo-coordinate search, all of our results are coming back from China. And to view any of these, we're just going to simply click on it. The user can now begin to ingest some of this banner data. Again, you'll have your IP address, the city, country, the organization, and ISP, last update in ASN, the port data here on the right side, as well as services below that. The next advanced searching method we'll cover is software searches. There in the middle of the slide, you can see some examples of filters to find software. These filters are useful when searching for particular technologies such as a database, a file server, or even just vulnerable software. We do have an example down there at the bottom of the screen, and it would find file transfer protocol servers that are in Russia that don't require logins. We're actually going to take this example and bring it over to Shodan and see what results we can find. So I've brought the example from the software searching slide over to Shodan. We've run port 21, country RU, and in quotations, login successful. This will return results for unsecure FTP servers that are located in Russia. We'll click on our first return and see what information is in the banner. So this FTP server is located in Moscow, according to geolocation data. Our country is Russia. Our organization and ISP is CJSC Netline. You can view the last update, the host name, as well as the ASN. To the right, as usual in the banner data, you'll have ports and services. Because this is an FTP server, we have this Microsoft FTP banner here. You can view all of that related data as well. 
Additionally, because this server is unsecure, we have this vulnerability warning. The next search method we'll cover is to discover open databases in Shodan. There are a few databases that are openly going to list their indices. Uh, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, and CouchDB are just a few examples. There in the middle of the screen are examples of some baseline searches that will allow the user to quickly identify open databases that may have valuable data. An example of an Elasticsearch database in China mentioning research is down at the bottom of the screen, and we'll go over to Shodan and test that one out. So now that we've run that example search, it actually only returned one result. That's fairly unique on Shodan, being that Shodan is indexing thousands upon thousands of devices. So we'll actually click on this and take a peek at it. So now that the banner is rendered, we can see the location. We don't have an exact city, but it looks like our map is centered over Shangzhou. The country is China. The organization is the Hangzhou Alibaba Advertising Company, as well as the same for the ISP. We do have update and ASN information as well. Being that we search for port 9200, that's our port information here. And again, we have information related to Elastic under the services portion. One thing to point out, if we go back to our results, on the right hand side of the IP address on the result is this little option with a square and an arrow. If we click on that, it'll launch this device into a new tab. So we'll click on it. And we're now viewing this server live in a new tab. The next option for advanced searches will cover network defense. The search methods I've shown previous to this are a little bit more geared for investigative purposes or open source data collection. But if you're a network defense professional, a security engineer, or someone along those lines, you can use Shodan to test against your own footprint. What I mean by that is you can take some of those examples there in the middle uh, and you can go to Shodan and search for your own devices on their indexes. Additionally, a lot of large corporations and organizations have their own CIDR ranges. Um, just a few that come to mind that most likely do have their own CIDR ranges would be companies like the Targets of the World, American Express, you know, very large international corporations. And if you're one of those network defense engineers or network defense specialists, you can go on to Shodan and begin querying for your own corporation's information. If you do that, what you can return in the results would be any sort of misconfigured or unsecured devices that you may have living within your perimeter. Um, it's just another way that you can leverage Shodan to be more effective. So to recap the advanced search techniques that we just went over, we did a geo-coordinate search we went through and found an FTP server that we actually were able to launch into and view. And we talked through some network defense search methods. Ultimately, what it boils down to is when you're using Shodan, there's an infinite number of possibilities as far as combining search filters to find relevant results. The only limiting factor there is going to be end user creativity. Next, we're going to cover some other features in Shodan. This first one is for the Explore page. The Explore page is great for users that are new to Shodan. It'll familiarize them with how data is presented as far as in the banner, as well as parameters for searching. Uh, but what users can do when they're on the Explore page is view the top voted searches, most recently shared searches, as well as featured categories. 
In Shodan, a user can generate reports of their search results. How you do this is on your results page, you'll simply click the Create Report option. Unfortunately, to create and store a report, you do have to generate an account with Shodan. What the report will contain is a graphical display of your search results. It's really useful when you're bringing in a large quantity of data with a search and you want a way to visualize it quickly. The next portion we'll cover is Shodan Maps. The Maps is located in the top left of your search results. Similar to the Create Report button, it's on that same toolbar, but it's just a few options to the left. All of the search filters that you may use in your queries will transfer over to the map. And a few uh, tips of advice here on the map. You can only render up to 1,000 devices at a given time in your map view. So if you're zoomed out really far and viewing multiple continents, um, you might hit that limit. So if you are using the map, I do suggest zooming in a bit so that you're ensuring all of the proper devices are rendered in your map view. Now that we've run through some of the additional features in Shodan, we'll flip over to the platform and go through them. The first one we'll cover is the Explore page. The Explore page is great for any of those new users that we mentioned when we were on the slide. You can come in here and quickly begin delving into information that's displayed in Shodan. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this first top voted search for webcams. We can begin pulling and viewing these results. If we go back to the Explore page, users can also click on some featured categories. So for industrial control systems, this is why I really pay attention and give call outs here for new users to Shodan. Um, this is a, a wealth of information for them. We have some common terms, um, some protocols, popular vendors. But again, it's just about building that, that sort of foundational knowledge to be effective in Shodan. So the next thing we're going to cover is I'm going to input a search for City Beijing and we're going to talk about creating reports. To create a report in Shodan, once you have a search rendered and the results are displayed on your screen, you'll come up to the top and click on the Create Report option. You'll be prompted to enter a name for your report. So I'll put Beijing 1. And now that we've created our report, it's being processed by Shodan. Unfortunately, to create and store reports, you do need an account. However, I can go ahead and pull up some reports that I have stored. So we'll click on Test Report 2. And you can see my search query up top. So we have Country RU Device Webcam. And the user can now begin to scroll down and view this information that's been visualized for us. We have our cities as the first option. We have Moscow as the top result. We have our top services, top organizations, top products, and more. Again, this is a really useful tool when you're examining large quantities of data and need a quick way to visualize it. The next option we're going to cover, and we're going to go back to Shodan and run a search for this. It's called Shodan Maps. So we'll actually just come up here to the top of the screen and we'll input that search for City Beijing. And similarly located to where our Create Report option was, but a few options over to the left is the Maps button. The user will click on that and it will pull you into the Shodan Maps. Now that we're in our Shodan Maps view, we've entered our query for City Beijing. Similar to on the normal results page, your filters will still persist on the left side of the screen but we're going to go ahead and move the map over and view our results that are in Beijing.
To do that, you'll simply click and drag on the map. You can use the options in the top right corner to zoom in or out, or the scroll wheel on your mouse. As the map does move, if you notice this updating option in the top right, it does tend to lag behind your movements a brief second. But now that we've zoomed in on Beijing, we'll go ahead and click our result. And we're going to get a quick snapshot of the information associated with this device. We have IP address, city, country, and organization, as well as some brief port data. But if we click view details, it'll pull us over to the full banner and the user can go ahead and ingest some of this data. One thing about Shodan Maps is there's a limit on the amount of devices that can be rendered on the map at a given time. It's going to cap out at a thousand devices. So if you are doing a search that's pretty broad, you can hit that limit pretty fast, especially if you're zoomed out extremely far and viewing multiple continents at a time. So that is one thing to be cognizant of when you are using the maps. You're going to want to focus your map view on the specific area that you're interested in. We're now at the conclusion of our Shodan training. For more information, you can contact your Authenticate POC or email us at osin at authenticate.com. Again, I'm Alec from the Special Services team, and thank you for participating.